My mother was moved to tears when she watched the beginning of Travel Tall, and my father wanted to share it with everyone he knew. Their reaction was all the validation I would ever need, because there is something about pursuing your dream and making your parents proud that goes far beyond words, even at the age of 33. But just before I could share my first episode with anyone else, I accidentally deleted it. Countless hours of editing, chopping and changing, and all the time spent challenging myself was gone just like that. And with no way to retrieve it, I sulked. Then I sulked some more. I sulked so much that it started feeling good. And as I flirted with the idea of giving up, a funny thing happened. My dream reached down and it picked me up like it knew I needed it. I was contacted by one of the largest newspapers in the country. They had stumbled across one of my photos on Instagram, and they asked me if they could publish it in their Sunday edition. I almost didn't believe it, but there was something miraculous about getting a sign like that. And the synchronicity of those events reignited my flame in a way that convinced me that I could make the beginning of travel tall even better the second time around. So I got off the canvas and I worked harder than ever to recreate it. I jumped right back into the ring and let my inner voice do all the talking once again. But when the faculty for my online film class watched it, they didn't pull any punches. They weren't quite as receptive as my parents. They said I had a unique perspective, but that it doesn't necessarily translate to an audience. And that if I'm going to be successful, I need a niche. That I must focus on one thing so that what I'm doing is clear for everyone else. I thought quitting my job and trying to write, film, and photograph my way around the world with little money, no experience, and without the use of air travel, overrode the need for a niche, but I guess not. And I'm not going to lie, my dream is so big it scares me. It makes my palms sweat, my eyes water, and my heart beat a little faster just when I think about what I've already poured into it. So forgive me if I don't want a niche, I don't want to limit myself. I've done that for far too long and I'm tired of it. From now on, I hope that I'm constantly changing, and that one big idea begets another and another, because at this point in my life, there's nothing worse than staying the same. And with that in mind, I try to simulate real-world travel conditions by taking a trip to the Everglades. But when I got home, I didn't have any facts about tropical wetlands written down, and I couldn't remember any statistics that my airboat captain recited. And to be honest, I have no desire to tell you that alligators are cold-blooded, or do any research on their habitat now that I'm back home. Details like that aren't important to me, and I hope they won't ever be. And since I don't know what to tell you about the Everglades, all I can do is tell you what the Everglades told me. They told me this filming and photography thing is going to be hard. They told me not to set my tripod on the deck of an airboat all afternoon and expect to get smooth shots. They told me to worry about my sound quality because filming outdoors comes with chirping birds and strong gusts of wind that can ruin even the prettiest of shots. They told me to go back home, and that if I'm really serious about making this my life, that I need to dig deeper and become a better writer and storyteller, because no one is going to care about where I'm going or what I'm doing. But even more important than that, they reminded me to slow down, and that I'm not doing this for anyone other than myself, so I can go in any direction I want at any time. And that I meant to move through this process of changing my life like the effortless airboat does the expanse of Everglades. And that in order to glide across the surface and over top of obstacles, it's about practicing the faith of least resistance, which is as simple as knowing that everything, even my perceived setbacks, are happening for very good reasons.